The atmosphere kicking into another year going into the new year, including big time snow possible for the East Coast. Before we map out the totals in the areas, if you're new to this channel, please consider going ahead and subscribing. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice. I give you an early warning of severe weather, a reliable forecast you can count on, and a direct approach you won't find anywhere else. And when it comes to winter weather forecasting, we really have to look at the upper parts of the atmosphere before we can look at the surface. And in winter time, it's all about the two jet streams. You have a southern jet you have a northern jet. Let me map out our next chance for snow. It'd be in the mountains of North Carolina through Tennessee going into Friday. Folks, this is not a big one, but don't be surprised if you see some flurries or some snow showers in areas of Tennessee and to Gatlinburg, western North Carolina, maybe even the upstate of South Carolina for a flake or two, but nothing big, nothing to write home about. Even in the highest parts of the mountains, we're talking an inch or two. The next targeted system will be moving in on New Year's Day. This was strictly a northern branch of the jet stream. Notice the flow right here. You don't have much interaction with the southern jet. There's a piece of energy way back here. We'll look at that toward middle next week, but this northern branch brings in cold air, just not a lot of moisture. So what it does is bring some snow to western North Carolina up through Virginia, maybe a little bit of rain farther south, but this is a fast-moving dry system, but it does set the stage for cold air. Beginning uh, in the new year, really January 1st and beyond, cold air is locked in across the east coast. That kind of sets the stage for what could come in and in the days following. January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, we've got the southern jet beginning to get a little bit more active. Notice this piece of energy back here. You've also got the northern branch of the jet stream trying to coincide. If the two phase together, that's what we call in meteorology when the two kind of merge. you got two highways basically merging into one. That can lead to a blockbuster snow, and we're watching for the possibility of that for some parts of the East Coast into next week. Let me map out January 3rd to 4th. This would be Wednesday into Thursday. That's our next targeted bigger system. This looks to have a lot more moisture because now the southern jet is involved. Notice these uh, lines of uh, pressure here with the 500 millibar levels. This brings in plenty of moisture here uh, streaming it north. You've got the northern branch of the jet stream at least trying to bring in colder air. So we'll need to look to see does this phase is the northern branch lagging behind to where it's just a, another sloppy El Nino rain for us. And that's the key folks. This El Nino winter is not disappointing moisture wise. We've had drought busting rain every 5 to 10 days across the east coast it has just been so wet but not very cold that looks to change going into january especially with this first system i don't know that this first one's going to give us much in the the, the southern parts of the united states like north carolina tennessee south carolina but it certainly kind of opens the door for what could come later on in January. Kind of the, the first renegade system to, to jostle up the atmosphere. So going into Thursday, this could really phase into a bigger system and, and bring in some big-time snow for parts of the Mid-Atlantic up through New England into the Northeast. So we'll watch for that, but no doubt about it. It looks like a piece of the polar vortex breaks off, comes to the south. Very cold air moves in as we go into the first few weeks of January, where it could be very, very, very cold across the East Coast. What does that look like on the surface? This is a little more of a familiar map to you. This is the European. It shows as we go into Friday, again, some snow showers in Tennessee, flurries for North Carolina, but it's really that Tennessee, North Carolina state line uh, border up through West Virginia and Virginia seeing some snow out of this. Good for snowshoe, good for boom. A couple of inches of fresh snow on top of the, the powder will be nice. But other than that, it's not a big system. Let's look into Monday. This would be the New Year system diving down. You see some snow and rain for the Midwest. This comes in January 1st, but it's kind of a disappointment. Just some, some quick hits of some moisture rolling in. That rolls to the east, and then going into Wednesday, Thursday's time frame comes our next bigger system. Let me switch to the six-hour mode. You can see as we go into our uh, third, fourth, and fifth, watching this closely here, here comes the southern jet really cranking in some moisture. This would send in plenty of rain with a surface low through the east coast, and it's cold enough here that it could be snow and, and a quick hit of some heavy snow for western North Carolina, back through Tennessee into Virginia, West Virginia, into Thursday, but changes over to rain before it moves on out. That could lead to a couple of inches of snow for some across the east coast, but mainly North Carolina northbound. And as it moves up the east coast, could bring some big time snow for parts of Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire. Good for uh, snow and ski lovers up that way. 
And then it looks to be pretty active with another system taking aim uh, as we go into the January 7th time frame into the early parts of that next week. How about the GFS? That was the European I just showed you. It shows, again, some snow flurries, some snow showers Friday going into the 1st and 2nd. That system is so suppressed and so dry, but a little bit of rain with a little bit of mountain snow going into Monday, Tuesday's time frame. And then as we go deeper into the forecast, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, this system is looking a lot different on this model. It has the northern branch of the jet stream just not really connecting and basically it just pushes this thing so far south that you don't get hardly any rain or snow at all out of this so the gfs and i got to tell you the canadian looks much of the same here out of this but going into january 6th 7th you got another rainmaker coming in typical for an el nino year but it does not connect the snow with it so how about snow totals the european goes pretty bonkers with five to six inches of mountain snow in north carolina up through virginia snowshoe three to five inches with uh, as much as uh, seven or eight inches up toward parts of, of, of Maine, going into New Hampshire, Vermont, uh, with, with the I-95 corridor east being pretty dry. Now, going into the GFS model, it shows uh, some snow for the North Carolina-Tennessee state line, two to four inches likely there up through Snowshoe. And then as you get up here toward Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, uh, possibly more, a foot or more could be possible depending on uh, the way that northern branch of the jet stream settles in. So if I blend the models together, this would be average Average of all of them, I get something a little bit more conservative, about one to two inches in North Carolina, three to five back through West Virginia and Virginia, and anywhere from five to six up through uh, the Northeast here, uh, which would be uh, a little bit more common. What I can tell you is going into January, when I look at this NAO, it's an oscillation that tells me kind of the way the pattern is shaping up. I see this turn not only negative, but severely negative as we go into the 5th, 6th, 7th time frame. So if this first uh, storm system or set of storm systems next week doesn't provide snow in the East Coast or much snow, it looks like there's at least another chance going through the 7th. And then this thing turns even more negative going into the middle of January. So what I can tell you is it looks like cold air is going to be periodically moving into the East Coast and could set up an interesting scenario to where I don't see us getting out of January. January without at least a good East Coast snowstorm or two. Uh, the uh, latest outlook here for temperatures uh, from the National uh, Weather Service folks, uh, below average across the southeast with above average precipitation. So uh, this would go through January 10th. And then as I look at the uh, January 6th through the 19th time frame, again, below average temperatures with above average rain chances. So hey folks, if you enjoy the, the type of forecasting I give you here, please consider subscribing to the channel. I promise to keep you posted as we look closer at the weather models in the coming days as snow becomes a real possibility for many across the East Coast. Right now, it's a chance. We're targeting the 1st, 2nd, and the 4th into the 5th time frame, that Wednesday, Thursday after New Year. Uh, could be something to watch for North Carolina northbound. But again, my goal is to always keep you posted, and I sure appreciate your time.